Hello, and welcome back for another Coffee Break Tech Talk on Digital Trust. I'm June, and I'm very happy to have with me today two guests who are eager to dive into the topic of secure connectivity with eSIM and iSIM technologies. Sylvia Kashish, Principal Analyst of IoT and Enterprise at GSMA Intelligence, and Thomas Su, Product Manager in Cloud and Network Services at Nokia. Welcome to you both. Great to be here. It's nice to be here too. Okay, so today we're going to talk about embedded SIM and integrated SIM, what they could do for mobile and IoT security, and to what degree they have the potential to be game changers when it comes to digital identities. In preparation for our conversation today, I was looking at a recent study that said digital identity schemes have been shifting from physical to mobile formats for several years now. 100% mobile is really where we're heading, especially as governments are basically insisting on mobility as part of their initiatives. It called out eSIM as a soon coming technique for this. That kind of thing would be a big step towards empowering true digital citizens, which is a key part of the eSIM, iSIM story. We'll get to that shortly, but first, Maybe a good place to start is by explaining eSIM and iSIM, what they are and what they do. Thomas, would you like to start? Yes, thank you. So basically, eSIM and iSIM are evolution of the SIM card technology. And all of us knows about the SIM. We've been using them in our phones. And eSIM basically stands for embedded SIMs and iSIM stands for integrated SIMs. And those SIMs are basically a part of the device. Uh, you don't need to, uh, uh, it's not an add-on anymore like the regular SIMs. So, it, so that makes them harder to tamper with and it's uh, more secure uh, fundamentally. And eSIM iSIM can be programmed over the air. And this is a fundamental change between the technology. And the subscription can be managed dynamically in real time. So you can switch uh, the provider uh, whenever you want. Okay, thanks. And um, Sylvia, you and your colleagues at GSMA Intelligence have been looking at just how massive that scale may be. Is is that right? Would you like to comment? Yeah, sure. Yeah, that's that's right. And um, what we see based on our research that enterprises are really entering the digital transformation journey. And COVID nineteen pandemic actually has sped up this quite a bit. And what we see that deploying IoT, so Internet of Things, AI machine learning, 5G and other technologies to enable that, just that. But just bringing it back to eSIM. So eSIM consumer devices, uh, we see that it has more than doubled in the last two years and, and reached 110 devices over a number of devices types, such as smartwatches, smartphones, laptops, and tablets. And what we see is the actual acceleration will happen from 2022. And majority of operators back then will, will offer um, uh, commercially eSIM uh, to smartphone customers. And we will see that vendors that currently do not offer um, eSIM phones will, will not buy then. But that's on the consumer side. When we look at the M2M as uh, machine to machine or IoT, um, at the moment, the majority of, of those deployments are within the automotive sector. So automotive is really at the forefront of um, eSIM deployments and uh, eSIM functionality, it is embedded in a growing number of new cars. But overall, when we see the size of the market, which is important to understand the addressable market, uh, we at GSMA Intelligence, we forecast by 2025, there will be 24 billion um, IoT connections. So that's across all connectivity types, cellular and non-cellular, of which uh, 3.8 billion will be licensed cellular IoT. But overall, what we see is because IoT, the number of connected devices uh, is increasing, unfortunately, that comes with a downside, which is increased surface of attacks as, as those devices actually touch upon some of the critical enterprise systems and, and actually the, the service of attacks and cyber attacks are increasing uh, because of that. Yes, thank you. Uh, so is that something enterprises are actively thinking about? Where, where do they see mobile and IoT security fitting into their overall digital transformation strategies? 
Uh, thank you for this question. This is really interesting. We, we've been running our enterprise in focus survey. So we're serving uh, 2,800 enterprises across a number of countries and eight verticals. And what we ask them is uh, whether or not having an IoT deployment, have you changed your cybersecurity practices? And majority of those enterprises that have deployed IoT, 85% have changed the way uh, deployed uh, IoT, they changed the security practices. So, And the reason why they did so is really interesting. Um, it is to establish security first strategy. So clearly security and making sure they come across as secure is top of the mind. Uh, and also 61% they use security as a unique um, selling point. So that's, that, that's important as well. But on the other side, we also see that security on, on the supply side it is front of mind for operators. So we have recently run an operator survey and what we've seen is that majority of, and, um, of operators look at security as a very important um, factor to help them achieve their enterprise revenue goals. Yes, that's interesting. Thank you. And uh, Thomas, how does that compare to what Nokia is hearing from customers with IoT deployments and new mobile services? Yeah, like what Sophia just mentioned, we hear similar things. Uh, from the enterprise side, they're really aware of the security need. They're looking for end-to-end -end security in uh, to dif to provide differentiate different differentiation in the IoT domain. And our customers basically telling us that 5G combined with ESM or ISM will create a more secure environment because the inherent security capabilities they both have from the network and from the ESM ISM perspective. But once you start talking about combining 5G and ISM, that will create additional collaborations between the manufacturing, the engineering, the commerce, and the technology providers to ensure the 5G economy, a digital economy, and the, and the digital service, they are more secure. And that's the basis for bringing new use cases and uh, new services to the industry. Or what's the broader context for mobile and IoT security? And so basically uh, what we see is that today, there's a lack of integration between the backend system and the mobile subscription. Uh, so that there's a lot of limitations on that. So with the onboarding, with the whole life cycle of ISM, ESM operations management in the onboarding process, that, that's area that need to be improved. Uh, secondly, uh, with that val validation, uh, if that can happen automatically, that will actually eliminate quite a few errors moving forward, just for onboarding uh, basis. And with the improvement and enhanced uh, E2E interoperability certification with the ecosystem, once you tie those together, uh, that will give you a, an access level to connectivity to device to application uh, level uh, interoperability uh, certification. And this allow you to have any device, any brand, any channel that will connect to the network that's required throughout the information within the subscription itself. So the goal uh, in this area is uh, one touch device onboarding and proactive monitoring troubleshooting to enhance the digital citizen experience and speed up the time to market for any mobile and IoT applications moving forward. Sylvia, does this tie in with GSMA's work on secure mobile devices and the IoT by using the SIM as a route of trust? Uh, we working on collaborating together with the Trusted Connectivity Alliance on a mechanism to secure IoT data um, in a cloud-based application. So it is called IoT Safe which stands for SIM applet for secure end-to-end -end communication. And that's, that's, that work continues and it's very important. And uh, what IAT SAFE does, it specifies a common API and defines a standardized way to ensure a mutual trust between the IoT device and the cloud. So SIM is used as a kind of crypto safe when you think about it. Um, and inside the device, it ensures that the secure session um, is carried through with the enterprise, uh, cloud, or application, or, or the survey. But IoT safe works with any SIM factor, um, including eSIM and, and iSIM. And that's, that's really key because we see increasingly eSIM and iSIM being deployed. 
Okay, interesting. Thanks. Um, so how familiar would you say enterprises are today with eSIM and iSIM? What's the level of adoption? Again, this is a really interesting question. We've done some research on that. So in our enterprise in focus server, we ask about how familiar, or how um, important eSIM is to enterprises uh, achieving the, the success with the IoT deployment. And 85% of enterprises said it is important. Um, and they actually expect eSIM to deliver more than just the traditional uh, SIM capabilities. And as far as the iSIM goes, um, it is really ideal for devices that are resource constrained. So um, also those that build um, more material sensitive. So think about NBIT, Sonar Band, IoT deployments, whereby you have a, a lot of um, IoT devices, part of, of massive IoT. And one of the really good examples to mention on that front is uh, Bayer working with Vodafone and Arm Kigen and Altar and Murata, whereby they created a smart, smart label to monitor products throughout the supply chain. Okay, thanks. And, and Thomas, does all of that align with what you're hearing? Yeah, I'm here pretty much the same thing, uh, like what Sophia just mentioned uh, in the market. And, and the feedback uh, from the customer base is consistent. Uh, this is also mainly because of the fact that ISIN is disrupting the connectivity value chain because the, the device providers, basically, they, they bypass the SIM vendor and directly getting the ISIM from the SAC providers uh, in the future. Actually, even today, uh, with a few companies support, already supporting ISIM technology. And this will, will actually uh, start creating new partnership, new players in the market, and, and the shifting of the ownership or management of the SIM or ES, the eSIM or iSIM profile, this might change because uh, to enable different use cases in the field. So right now, CSP are uh, mainly doing all the uh, provisioning, but it doesn't mean in the future the enterprise does, does not want to have the freedom to manage their own subscription working with a service provider. So this could be a shift in the paradigm uh, itself on how the end-to-end -end operational model might look like uh, moving forward. But um, but there is the implication of security in this case, because uh, there's quite a few data that's within the subscription uh, profiles that, that's, that have to be super securely uh, managed, uh, because once that gets out, people might get, might get onto CSB's network. So, so this, we also hearing uh, various customers that we're talking to, they, they're, they want to move to that direction to enable enterprises, but at the same time, they are holding back because of security uh, requirements. And with uh, with ISIN, ESIN as the basis of digital identity, like what Sophia mentioned with all the new specifications coming out, this most likely will change how things will work and how the operations will, will be enabled. And this will provide more critical uh, control and security with those sensitive data that's being used in the network. So a lot will be depends on how the ESIM, ISIM will be managed and how the information will be controlled of, and how the information will be shipped from one platform to another platform. And those are critical items we need to address as the industry. And, and, and that in a way brings us back to where we started and the notion of the all digital world. Uh, yes, and to, to, to add to, but to add on top of that, uh, with ESIM ISIM as a rule of trust, right? This will become a digital identifier and ability to authenticate in a fully automated machine-to-machine -machine, uh, communication environment. So basically, people can can be the uh, digital citizens that's in this new uh, futuristic uh, environment. So their passport can be on their phone, right? With complete security, they can share health data. Uh, critical securely with the health providers. The carriers can can be switched automatically as the subscriber travel from country to country. This is the future of the new smart devices moving forward. And this will be pretty much in all the consumer wearables, gadgets, uh, electronic electronics that we own. And this will be better served with the 
the new technology and uh, the ESIM ISIM will be the one who's going to enable this. And let's talk about machine-to-machine uh, -machine communication. Uh, example will be what uh, Sophia also mentioned, the adoption of the smart cars. The ESIM ISIM will significantly simplify the logistic of the of the SIMs because the profiles can be installed remotely to a large fleet of uh, cars at the same time if you really want to. And this also avoid roaming charges. Let's say a car is built in Germany and is shipped to the US and the profile has to change from, from uh, Germany as, as it's been going through the production. When it comes to the US, it has to switch to the new um, new carrier that's in the US. So those kind of things will, can happen pretty fast. And overall, the ability to provide secure and trusted ID may land on some new roles for the CSPs moving forward to provide additional services to enterprises and, gov and governments moving forward. And what about that, the role of the CSP in all of this? It is understandable that some of the CSPs uh, have been quite reluctant to adopt eSIM or iSIM um, because what to stop the customers switching operators if no longer no longer physically locked into the device. So that that's 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 quite a bit of an issue when it comes to, to operators, mobile operators. Um, according to our operators in focus survey and the price opportunity 2021, um, only less than a hundred of operators, so 29% of operators to be exact, deem eSIM as an important technological capability helping them to achieve enterprise revenue goals. So um, despite a clear demand from the market. So um, it's not very it, it's not on top of, of the agenda, but their opportunities, as, as Thomas mentioned, are significant if they want to we look at the role within the ecosystem. Um, so, for example, providers with global logistic capabilities and global manufacturing partnerships uh, are taking place. So, Orange uh, is already using eSIM and iSIM technologies where it makes sense, uh, making sure that they can provide a seamless automated provisioning. Thank you. And Thomas, would you like to comment? Well, basically, I'm in total agreement with what uh, so Sophia just mentioned. Uh, just to add on top of it, uh, with this new technology, with 5G, with eSIM, iSIM, and and also there's also a need for the CSPs to change the uh, uh, their operations, end-to-end uh, -end operations, because uh, they need to find better ways to adapt the the workflow for eSIM, iSIM, and and this will enable them to provide a better experience for the for the uh, end customers, both enterprise and subscribers, uh, by providing a simpler and faster way to sign up new services and also help them uh, facilitate uh, any kind of uh, uh, international roaming services uh, or reducing the roaming service charge for those customers. Uh, those are really important things to explore to, to bring down the cost to, to support devices with ESIM, ISIM moving forward with the, with, for all the digital services and with digital identity, for example, and data access and even payment, which people are already doing today. But all those things will be tied together as the new economy and, and the new world that we're going to be uh, living in. Thank you. Well, it seems clear that eSIM and iSIM represent a big opportunity for CSPs and enterprises. And I think from the discussion, there can be no question. These advances in SIM technologies are going to radically transform the world of IoT and smartphones, enable digital citizens and address certain security challenges. Sylvia Kashish, Thomas Su, I would want to thank you both for being here today. It's been a great conversation. And to everyone watching, I hope you'll join us again for our next Coffee Time Tech Talk. Take care. Goodbye. Goodbye, bye-bye. Goodbye. goodbye. goodbye.